Welcome to hour number two on a Friday on Hashtag Daily K with your host, Peter Bint. How much do you know about K food? How much hanshik have you eaten? We invite you into the world of Korean food, of course, including the history and culture of it. We'll introduce trendy foods and famous restaurants on Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan. It is a Friday or a Fri-yay if you're feeling like me. This week has been a little longer than you would have liked. And <laughs> Chef Ryan is here with food, which is the best way to end or start any week, I feel. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm really happy to be here, Peter. Fantastic. We're always happy to have you, Ryan. And have you been... Did you catch any of the show so far? Because we were talking a little bit about p u d e c h i k e in the opening. Oh, well, I, I heard the hashtag of the day, and that's right up my alley. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because apparently the Canned Ham, the big company that does most of <laughs> sure, the Canned sure, Ham sure. business in the world, yeah. maybe a Canned Ham cartel, I'm not sure, yeah. they're apparently Promoting on their website okay. as a way to use our product, you should put it into p u d e c h i k e Really? And so they're telling, not for Korea, but for international like, consumers of wow. it. Yeah, and they're wow. calling it the army stew, yeah, even recommending yeah. putting in ramen as well and having a bowl of rice on the side. Well, Are you a fan a... of p u d e c h i k e Uh, y- <laughs> yes, uh, it tastes great. It mm-hmm. tastes great, but yeah. I don't. I don't tend to eat a lot of processed food. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't once it? Once you start farming, man, I'm telling you. Uh, once you start eating that kind of stuff all the time. The other stuff just isn't appealing to you. Really? Yeah. It's not that you want it and you're trying your best not to have it. It's just you don't crave it. Yeah, don't crave it that's anymore. Amazing. Yeah. It, well, it, and when you do eat, say, fast food. Uh-huh. And I'm not trying to throw ham under the bus by okay. any means. I make, I make cottage hams and I love them. Oh. But I am well aware that they're not the healthiest thing okay. for me. So I try not to eat them all the time. What is um, a cottage ham? Uh, it, it's a ham that takes only about, mine take about 14 days to make, okay. as opposed to a traditional American country ham, How long which does I that love take? those. Uh, you're looking at four months <gasps> minimum, maybe three, some of them rush it to three, you know, wow. they'll inject them, but they need to hang in a smokehouse, okay. right? Uh, to get that slow, long, beautiful <laughs> painting of smoke, you wow. know, so... And then your yep. cottage one's just 14 days smoked as well. Well, that... it is smoked, but first it's, br- it's wet brined, then uh-huh. dry aged, then okay. sous vide, uh-huh. then finally smoked. Wow. Um, and then, I got to bring you some of that, man. It, it is meat candy. Ham, oh. it, ham is delicious. But the WHO, you mm-hmm. know, the World Health Organization came out. 20 years ago and said, you know, nitrites, nitrates, nitrites are not great for you. So don't (laughs) eat bacon every day of the week. And then 10 years ago, they came out and said, maybe just once a week is okay. And then I think it was about seven or eight years ago, they came out and said, Mm. maybe don't (laughs) eat that at all. And it's in, it's in every kind of ham. It's in every kind of sausage, just about, unless you find the ones bacon as well, unless you find the ones that say nitrate free. Oh, really? It it can be done. It can be done. It doesn't taste as good. Oh dear. Is that the same nitrates that we talk about in Korea, maybe in ramen and things like that, where we, oh, is that nitrium and talking about salt content? perhaps? Right, right. Ah. Cause it's, it's yeah, it's sodium nitrate or yeah. Um, it, it's an incredible preservative mm. and, uh, especially for meats, if you want to, you know, keep meat safe. Yeah. Um, and so we started using them, you know, maybe a hundred years ago oh, dear. and, and you know, a lot of people, a lot of people argue that it's not ever going to hurt you and maybe they're <laughs> right. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I did see that data, that kind of report from the WHO and it kind of crushed me cause I love yeah. bacon so I know, much. Me too. Right? And I still eat bacon. Yeah. yeah sure, sure, if you have sure. a breakfast like a full english or even an american style pancake you gotta have bacon right? absolutely i had bacon yesterday yeah there breakfast. you go i mean yeah. like like we said maybe not every day well definitely try and not have it every day that's it it's a little treat that's, that's a little it. treat because yeah. everything's killing us breathing is killing exactly. us. exactly right? <laughs> you gotta enjoy life 
Uh, today's ingredient, today's topic for Dish of the Day, where do we stand on the health scale with this, I wonder? <laughs> I'm not really sure, to be honest. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't, you know, it's got to be a little up there in cholesterol, but, okay. you know, I could argue that cholesterol is not bad for you as long as you don't eat a lot of processed uh, sugar. Okay. Uh, or, or wheat, you know, that's, that's uh, uh. you know, bleached or... Uh. Yeah. Okay, so if you keep those kind of separate, having cholesterol without that other bad stuff, it's not too That's bad. what they say these days. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure enough. Uh, the reason it's high in cholesterol is because it's traditionally made with cow or pig's blood, right? Okie dokie. But you mentioned, I heard you earlier talking yep. about blood sausage from like the UK or Black Scotland. Black pudding, yeah. Oh, it is good. Do you really? like it? No. You hate it. Okay. And so everyone was complaining and going, oh, Peter's fussy again. Like yeah. he's got this big list of things he doesn't eat. Is black pudding like universally loved? I thought it was kind of a split thing. Well, um, I, you know, it's heavy mm. to me. I did not grow up having it, no. you know, but I, I was in Scotland for some time and yeah. And and I enjoy I enjoy trying everything at least <laughs> once right, and and I really liked a blood pudding or black pudding, uh, but it is incredibly heavy, uh -huh. especially compared to what we're talking about today. Yeah, because I don't really taste or notice the blood in what we're talking about today. Exactly. Maybe my tongue is not trained to it. Exactly, but. Yeah. The thing that we're going to be having as a common theme throughout all three parts, I guess, is the sunde part. Of this, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it is it is always called Korean blood sausage mm. uh, in in English, um, but if you did a search S U N uh, D A E Korean yeah. spelled that way uh, sunde, you'll you'll find tons of things about it, mm -hmm. and and it's evolved a lot over the years. You know, a thousand years ago, it didn't really have starch noodles in it. Oh, okay. Did you know that? I, I did hear that it was more like the blood was the main thing. And exactly. The and were and not maybe so. some, some barley oh. would be in there. Right. Then that's more like the English like black pudding. I know, we have, like, right? Because we have oats and stuff. Right, there. right. And there's a German thing that's like that too. Oh. Um, I forget the name of it. My parents could help me right now. It starts oh. with a G. Cool. Oh, what is that called? Uh, somebody help us out there. It's it's really popular in Ohio around Cincinnati. Oh, and originally from Germany. I, I believe so. That's uh, so uh, gosh, I can't believe I've forgotten this one. But yeah, it, it also has grains and, and meat along with it. So so the Korean sunde has like a thousand year history? Supposedly. Yeah, oh, wow. it's there. It's in literature going back uh, even a little more than a thousand years ago. Oh. Um, and it was traditionally with with family gatherings, you know, as a special kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, you know, when we think about sausage in the West, I always thought it's a way for the butcher to sell <laughs> the 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 other bits. You know, we yeah. call them the nasty bits. You Just know, the, mash the, them all the up, parts, right? right, the fat. <laughs> um, but, you know, Sunde doesn't have really any fat. Mm. Um, that's some, that's a big difference between Korean cuisine and a lot of Western cuisines is, yeah. is, um, you know, Korean cuisine is often trying to eliminate as much fat as possible. Mm. And Sunde is instead trying to use the blood, yeah. um, with nowadays starch noodles, but back then it would have been oats or even yeah. pieces of meat as well. Inside the sausage. Yeah. That's it. Because these days when you have the most common type of Sunde, I would say it's the starch noodles that dominate in there. Right? Totally. Totally. And not totally. really much else, so it's kind of easy to eat. Donna says, I don't mind Sunday when I had it in a restaurant, but my hubs, who I believe is Korean Donna, hates it. Oh. Really? Okay. Now, we're probably grossing out a few people already, uh -huh. all right? Because we're talking about <laughs> blood sausage, and as soon as you hear that, you're yeah. like, ah, I don't know about this show. <laughs> but let me tell you, from my own personal experience, the very first time I had it, and the first time I had it, I had the starch noodle kind, yeah. which has very little blood in it. Yeah. But I tasted it, and I was like... Yeah, I don't really need this in my life. Yeah, it doesn't really taste of much. Yeah, it's just it? it's just chewy. It, it's in an intestine casing, yeah. you know. But it's it's just this uh, these starch noodles, the dangmyeon, mm. and they're just kind of chewy, and there's not a whole lot of flavor. And you maybe dab it in on a bit of salt, and yeah. that's it. But then the second time I had it, the third time I had it, the fourth, it grew. <laughs> it really started to grow on me. And when you're out at night and you find the the street food vendor that has the topoki, you know, and and has the sunde and has the little salt, mm. it is kind of comforting. Yeah, um, it's grown on me as well because I used to hate the visuals of it, and I yeah. would associate it with black pudding. Yeah, and yeah. Then when I taste it, I was like, oh, it doesn't really taste of blood or anything like that. And I love salt, so when you dip it in that little sure. bit of salt, sure. And if yeah. you just smother it in dakboki sauce, that kind of spicy sauce, it just takes on 
than that flavor and it's just an interesting texture exactly and i think what happened is is right after the korean war when meat was so scarce mm. they started shoving all this dangmyeon in there just to give people something to eat right uh, some and starch. then and then blood the the blood of the pig could also still be used you mm-hmm. know to add some other flavor and color to it yeah and and that's how it became so widespread as street food that way uh-huh. and but but now when you go back to those traditional kinds which you of course today you can find those all over the place mm. there's really something there and they are delicious you got to give them a chance they often have rice inside we'll, we'll talk about all different kinds of varieties yeah. even show you some little videos and stuff oh too. nice yeah. so we're going to see how sunde can look very different and in very different dishes as well it doesn't have to be eaten by itself with just a pinch of salt welcome to arirang radio if you are in jeju 88.7 in jeju city 88.1 in Sogipu City. 101.9 in the Daejeong area. We're back for part two. Dish of the day was Chef Ryan in the studio. And we're talking all about sunde. And I like that you spelled it out, right? S-U-N-D-A-E. Because blood sausage, it does conjure up lots of different images and i think they're not accurate to this uh it is a noodle filled sausage for the most part these days these days yeah the cheap the cheaper ones but yeah. they're really and, and they're not bad no but the the more traditional ones there's such a wide range um we're going to show you a, a pictures of all of them we'll talk about them all we um, found out the german thing as well yeah, that you were yeah. mentioning i don't know how to pronounce this G O E T T A. I think it's Geta. Geta. Yeah. Okay. Like the DJ, maybe. And it looks interesting. It's like a kind of flat rectangular sausage patty ish. Cincinnati, Ohio used to be called Porkopolis. Oh, really? Because of, yeah, because of all the pork that went wow. through there. Wow. And, and I believe the German population around Cincinnati brought this oh. and so you can still find getta in a lot of places there i've tried it there i've had some that were pretty darn good oh. it's loaded full of oats and and then pork as well so yeah so. catherine from the u.s got it right i think you're thinking of getta that is exactly thank what you it is. catherine brianna as well shouting that out i've never heard of that i don't know if it's in english cuisine at all i'll have to go to cincinnati i suppose uh you got a couple of messages i right? sure do i sure do here donna in new york i was vegan for seven years Years after chemo and my brother asked me what i missed and i said sausage oh, oh. that's yeah yeah i can't blame you there's You're so right. much you know and then there's a little off topic but the the innards we, didn't we talk about gopjang makjang dechang uh, like a month or so back or something i think so the, the these restaurants here that serve these these intestines grilled at your table mm. Wow, the the first bite I've had of some of them, it's just everything that you love about really good sausage. <laughs> so I, I hope everybody gets to try that someday here. Yeah, I feel maybe that's better for you because it's not so processed, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's good just point. Out of the animal, it's all natural, and why waste anything, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. In in the West, I guess, yeah, we wanted to package it into a sausage to make people uh, not be too fearful of it. But here, we just slap it on your grill and you eat it. Uh, Brian says, I remember. A friend of mine was craving sunde and called me and we went out to find a speciality sunde place sort of late at night on a weekday and it was so good yeah in non-covid times you can find it so easily on the streets right yeah um man isn't it something lately there's so many of the street vendors haven't been open mm. the trucks have been just sitting there wrapped up tight yeah. in the same parking spot um you know here we've got benedict down in the philippines they call it in ta- uh, Tagalog, it's called din, dinuguan. Dinuguan oh, is oh. a Filipino savory stew, usually of pork offal. And, and by offal, of course, he means the intestines uh, or innards and or meat simmered in a rich, spicy, dark gravy of pig blood, oh. uh, garlic, chili, and vinegar. Wow, yeah. There's so many. In, in Brazil, um, there's a there's a dish that's made with chicken's blood. Okay. And and I you know, I, I don't think I ever tried it at the time I was there, but but uh but I hear it's it's pretty good. A lot of people love it, a lot of people hate it. Yeah, yeah I guess we shouldn't waste those ingredients. We should try and make use of them. Absolutely. Know? Yeah. Uh we've also got Siska who says, I haven't tried Sunda that they sell at the market because no one has wanted to share with me and I'm a bit afraid to try, but I have tried and i love sunday cook the soup 
version. There we go. Maybe, yeah, that's a good gateway into it. That's when I really started to love this because oh. I, I started going once or twice a week for Sunday Goop. Wow. That first year in Korea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mm. it was a kind of affordable, filling, soupy dish that we will talk about today. Five bucks, and boy, that stuff is good. But you got to <laughs> learn what to add and uh, how to add it. It's, okay. it's important. The secret recipe will yeah. be coming up. Let's get on to some of your photos as well, Ryan. Yes, then. please. So what are we looking at in this one? Okay. First one, this is the traditional sundae. It looks okay? much meatier, doesn't it? it? Doesn't it look nice? It looks yeah. more like sausage sausage, and, right? And the way we have the sundae is not like a sausage is just plonked on your plate. It's cut into these little circular Already. portions. Because it's not being grilled or fried mm. or pan fried or anything like that. It's being steamed. Mm. Yeah. It's a healthier version of a sausage. Perhaps. Again, again, yes. It's it's a different it's a different animal. So b- calling it blood sausage, mm-hmm. the blood part and the sausage part just <laughs> don't quite fit. It's no. yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay, that looked really kind of quaint and luxurious almost. I don't think I've had Sunday like that to be honest. What? Not a proper like I've had God, the. We, I can't wait until I can bring some things into you again, and we can eat them here because you got to try some of those. This picture, this is what Sunday for me is, and I know we said it's the basic cheap one, but for me it's the least offensive in any way, right? And True. my child, my son, loves this. It's it's the most boring of all the, of them, <laughs> but it's still good. Okay, and this is the one that after the Korean War, the scarcity of meat, I, I believe, led to. The stuffing of the intestines with, rather than meat and mm-hmm. much blood, it was um, the starch noodles or dangyeon. Yeah, so you so, can see the little circles, right? They've just been cut straight through. So the sausage is filled with the noodles. Totally, right? yeah. totally. It's like 98% <laughs> dangyeon, starch noodles. Yeah, yeah, just in that kind of intestine. So it's kind of squeaky, said. but you know, I do crave this every now and again. Yeah. Uh, because it is really unique. It's um, the ones you'll often find at the treat vendors with the duck bokki. Exactly. In that big steaming pot that they have. Oh, there. and you can even get, sometimes they'll batter and fry these suckers. Oh. And then you can get more of that topoki sauce on there. And, yeah, it's uh, a good it's, combo, it's good. isn't it? Okay. okay, now we're really talking. All right. So the next picture coming up. Now we're talking about uh, chop sao. Okay. So okay. glutinous rice? Yes. Inside yes. instead of tangmyeon, perhaps. Yeah. So there, there's a bunch of different traditional varieties. We talked about there being barley added way back in the day. Uh-huh. This one has the glutinous rice. It has obviously more meat. And yeah. then the blood is more like... Cause you know, there's the sunje, or right, the the coagulated blood. Ah, uh, um, the sonji. Sonji. Sorry, sonji. sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the sonji, and that is stuffed in there as well. Oh. So, so a little bit more oomph. You know, wow. less of the starch noodles and more of something something interesting in there. More for you to chew. So yeah, and, I've seen that and had that version the glutinous rice you jog my memory oh really okay all right now it, it was a bit of a foreign experience in my yeah. mouth to be honest i was like oh what's all these things like okay, popping and okay. bursting and where yeah. was do you remember where that was it was remember? out in the countryside maybe okay. near Yichon, maybe we went with my father-in-law because he used to go often it's one okay. of his favorite foods and it was like his place and it was sure, an old sure. restaurant like 40 years old really run down oh i bet it's good and it, it, everyone else loved it. I yeah. wasn't sure. I'm still They're probably not sure. making it on site. I you think know, that's, so. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love these things, man. Uh, next picture. All right, now that that is the Jejudo Pisunde. It looks like a lot of blood is in there, right? It is, and it also has glutinous rice in there. But okay, okay I got to tell you about this one. A chef friend of mine, a Korean chef friend of mine, uh-huh. told me. Next time you go to Jeju, yeah. go to the market just west of Jeju City. Uh-huh. Um, I forget the exact name of that market, but it's it's the first one on the west side of town. Okay. And and go through that little market and, and look for the people that are selling Jeju pea sundae. Oh. Uh, it's blood blood sauce. Pea, it does, it, yeah, directly translated correctly there. It's not great um, marketing, but... <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And there are only two vendors, these two old ladies in this market that still make these. Uh-huh. And uh, they they look a lot like this right here. Um, and he said, "Take get that, bring it back, and I'll show you how to cook it. Oh, and so a way. I, so I brought them, you know, in the plane back to, to Seoul and, yep. and to Suwon. It's not easy to find here, I guess. And he came over and, uh, right, right. It's yeah. harder to find, you know, um, off the island. 
and he's like, fire up the grill. I was like, what, really? Oh. Yeah, because I told, these are normally steamed, right? Yeah. He said, fire up the grill and, and let's find a nice bottle of red wine. I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> So, but no joke, yeah. this one really held up so nicely, grilled, yeah. sliced, yeah. and then, you know, like a like a side dish with a nice deep um, red wine. Wow. So, I guess you have red meat with red wine. I'm, What's redder than blood? I'm telling you, the range on Sunday, the first time I had it, and it was just like, oh, these chewy starch mm. things, and then... The Jeju one. I mean, there's some really good stuff here. It did look very different, the texture yeah. here. And then this last one, I think this is kind of like a comfort food to people. And you Absolutely. might get it as an yeah. anju as well, a side dish when you're drinking some soju or something like that. Do you eat this? I don't mind this because this has other things to eat in there, right? The fried yeah, vegetables yeah. Abs- and stuff absolutely. like that. Yeah. This, this is, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's a bit of a poor man's delight mm, Yes. here in Korea. I mean, it's cheap. Mm-hmm. It's so good. It's definitely comfort food. I mean, it's full of cabbage, which is one of the cheaper vegetables that you can add to anything. Onion, yeah. a little carrot. Um, there's perilla leaves, chilies. You can have it spicy or not spicy. And and this is just a bokum, a stir fry with sundae. Often there are some intestines you can add in there as uh-huh. well. And man, this is good. Sometimes you can find it for sale on the street, yeah. but there are a lot of restaurants that specialize in this as well. And, and I know folks, I, know, I have Korean friends that, you know, that when they were younger and, and didn't have much money, they would all meet up once a week with their, with their girlfriends or guy friends and mm-hmm. all, all meet at this restaurant and just chow down on this. Yeah. And they would only have to spend maybe three or four bucks a piece. You yeah. Know? I think it's one of those dishes that was kind of in more recent years, trendy because it's not trendy kind of oh really yeah. okay well i have seen a lot more of the trucks pop up even in my neighborhood oh nice there's been two warring trucks with sunday you know, with sunday oh. Gobjang Bokum. Oh, yeah. oh wow yeah. with the intestines added as well that's it you got a message from i do from raul uh como estas que hora son allá uh, he's talking about morcilla is a traditional component of asado, uh, an Argentinian style of sausage. Oh, um, I've not tried that one. And I, I lived in Brazil for a couple of years yeah. and I love Argentinian barbecue. I really want to do the goat thing. Have you ever seen this? No. What's the goat thing? Oh gosh. What's it called? Um, Raul, you gotta help me out. But where <laughs> they, they put, they lean the whole goat <gasps> over the fire. Wow. You know, for hours and hours on uh-huh. end. I'm going to, my goal is to try that this year on our farm here in Korea. Is goat meat good? Because I've never tried it. It's so good. Really? Man. It's so good. Like, now, what was it similar to, or how would you describe uh, it? Oh, lamb. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. I love sure. lamb. Yeah, yeah. And now, the Korean ways of doing the goat can be a little greasy. They have the... they leave the skin on and all that fat, which is not a bad thing, but it, it's, it puts a lot of people off. The hukyum saw. And it's right, seen right, as right. like a health thing, right? It's going to sure. give you a boost. And sure, so sure, 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 I sure. saw someone drinking just goat extract. It had like been boiled that. down. I think that's from the bones. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, that doesn't I'm not look... sure what that's doing for them. But, uh, <laughs> but hey, thousands of years of traditional medicine yeah. might be more right than than we think who yeah knows? Uh, who knows indeedy uh so we've got some oh these are photos from Rao that we can show now actually uh i don't think this oh, is the more cool. chiller or is it because you said this is no i think it is wow black... i've got to, i've got to look into this are you oh you're saying this black pudding the sausage base cooked with blood and pork mixed with pork fat onion, it looks different so spices. similar but maybe a bit more like the UK or Scottish. Mm. It looks a little more dense than yeah. what we've got here. Yeah. But but I could be wrong. I, I... Also, in those wow. cases, oh, that's wow. it cooked. Oh, it looks, it looks more like so a sausage. Similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, Raul, thank you. Send it in next time. Well, muchas gracias. Eh? You have a batch, absolutely. Uh, we got your video to show, or should we go to... Let's watch a the video, little video, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. So we're going to look at the soup version. Yeah, yeah, I went to, I found a restaurant that had the traditional kind. Oh. And and yes, I got the the sundae and the soup. Check it out. All right, sundae cook. Here we go. Everybody, it's a, a cold winter day in Korea. So it's a perfect day to have this lovely ingredient right here. Uh this is sundae. We've got a few different kinds oh, right here. A little mulgum shiny set or a mixed set of sundae. And then the real perfect 
cold winter day dish is this guy right here, the yes. Sunday Goop Bop. Steaming hot pot. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Is that how it came to your table? Almost. I'll show hot. you. I'll show you how you gotta make it. You got that's the radish strips. Yeah, now that is really important. The radish cubes. Yes, because you need the liquid. Oh. I'm gonna teach you guys how to eat Sunday Goop. I hope someday you get to try this dish. <laughs> All right. So it's not simply eating it like that, just right. the way it comes. No, um, and, and a lot of restaurants, when they bring it to the table, it hasn't even been seasoned. At all. It, if you ate it, like if you, if you were just here <laughs> visiting Korea and uh -huh. you walked into a restaurant and ordered this bowl, it might come to the table with no salt in it whatsoever. Wow. No red pepper paste whatsoever. And you might and think you have, that's... Not nice. <laughs> well, yeah, you taste it and it's like, well, that just is like dishwater. Um, but, you know, I've had, I've been here a long time and had Korean friends, many mm -hmm. over the years, teach me different variations of what yeah. you need to add. And there are quite a few little components. There's the, the fermented shrimp paste. There's yeah. the red pepper paste. But the real trick, mm -hmm. the real pro tip yeah. on Suneguk is the katugi kongmu. Oh. It's the, the radish kimchi liquid. You, okay. You put that in? Yes. And when I asked the gentleman at the restaurant yeah. for some extra, he laughed oh. because he saw the foreign face. <laughs> He's like, oh, he knows. And then I heard him back in the kitchen telling the kitchen staff, how does this guy know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sounds so. brilliant. So not necessarily putting in the gaktogi, the cubes itself, but no, just the little kung the, the liquid. The liquid yes, from there. Yes. And it also has the added benefit of cooling down that boiling hot soup so you can eat wow. it faster. Oh, it's got a little double meaning. Uh, is this the place you went, or this is a famous place that we're looking at now? The right. Shigols. Yeah, I, I, I like to share with you guys, in case you do have a chance to come to Korea, uh -huh. I, I, I search uh, and try to find some of the most popular ones around Seoul. Ooh. And this one, I believe, let me double check, was on the near near Hongdae or Hapjong. Ah, yeah. And Shigol means like countryside, right? Exactly. So okay. it's called Shigol Sunday. And there's quite a few Shigo Sundays around the city. Unlock a chain. But this particular one has much better reviews than the others. Oh. Uh, and it's and it's north of Hapjong Station. Okay. And it looks like the real deal. I'm, I cannot say I've been there myself, but okay. I wanted to find some of the most popular, uh, loved on social media <laughs> uh, ones. And this really looks legit. Yeah, we're looking See at how, the bowl there. Yeah. That looks like the kind of chap sao version, perhaps? Yes, or, or definitely there, there's some vegetables and meat in there, not just the starch noodles. So is that what you're getting? You're getting a broth that's been made of just boiling this sausage. It's you not got like it. a different base or anything. You got it. That's it. They're steamed to cook, uh -huh. but then they're dropped in later into the broth, into uh -huh. the soup. So there's uh, dulce karu, the perilla seed powder, uh -huh. which brightens things up. Okay. Also gets stuck in your teeth every time. You got to check the mirror <laughs> before you leave the restaurant. There's uh, there's obviously a lot of onion there, the mm -hmm. the leeks. Yeah. Um, then you'll you'll have the shrimp paste next to it. You'll have the the radish kimchi liquid to add to it. You'll have red pepper paste to add even some salt around usually. And you can all put those. Into the soup to season Into it. Into the soup to season it. There's also garlic chives or oh, buchu that yeah. you'll usually have around to add to them. Oh, Not to every put... restaurant has all of those, but every restaurant has at least two or three of those. Sure. And then you can dip the sunde from the soup into like the salt or whatever. In the salt and or, my favorite is to dip the sunde in the shrimp, uh, the uh, fermented shrimp sauce. Wow. This so good. sunde we're looking at now it, that looks a lot interesting more blood. as well. A lot more like the Argentinian one looked, right? Yeah, like it looks like yeah. it's sonji inside. Exactly, you know, the that's, what that's what it is. Yeah, yeah that's not my <laughs> cup of tea at all. Because <laughs> we, we have the sonji hejangkuk, right? The hangover yeah. soup that just has chunks of congealed blood in it. Yes. And I have tried not that. Not a fan of that one. Because I don't like the taste of iron. Like, okay. When I okay. have spinach, I really taste the iron even in there. <sighs> so with the sonji, it felt yeah. like I was chewing on iron filings or something yeah, like the that. Chol mat, the iron. Yeah, I yeah, got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. If you don't like that, you probably wouldn't like that particular one. Just too but, chewy, indeedy. Yeah. The, this next photo, Ryan, 
what it looks like a little luxurious plating that's it. another and see that's being steamed at your table so that's kind of oh. cool right and then those are the garlic chives on top okay. it looks like underneath the garlic chives are probably different pieces of meat around the head of the pig okay there's often little pieces of ear that are steamed until kind of tender almost yep. almost tender a little <laughs> crunch in there yeah uh not everybody's favorite but again if you're going to slaughter the animal, let's use all of it. This you know? is true. Let's not yeah. waste. Waste not one. Not. Sure. And you often get those bits in a sundekuk, don't you? Like the kind of moddy. Always. Yeah. Always. That's and what so really that put me scares off. some people too. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to eat the head right now. Yeah. Maybe later. Ryan, um, we've run out of time, unfortunately. I hope this has been an eye opener. And I hope we've talked to you around guys and girls who are maybe thinking, that's not my cup of tea. You got to try it at least. And, and then again, and again. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be something you like, right? Uh, right. Have a brilliant weekend and we'll see you Thanks. next Friday. You can listen to Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan every Friday at 10am KST on Hashtag Daily Cake.